All right, welcome to the Timo Chom Shir. We're going to talk about from the Parsha of Shalach, the punishment of the Maraglim, the spies, and what we learn from that about the connection between God, children of Israel, and the land of Israel. We know the story that Moshe sent 12 spies, one from each tribe, to spy out the land, the land of Israel. And all but two of the spies came back with uh, negative reports about how the land eats up its inhabitants and so on, with the exception of Kale ben Yefuna and Yeshua ben Nun. And as a punishment for that, Hashem said, you and all the people will die in this desert and you'll stay here for the next 40 years and anybody between 20 and 60 will not, uh, will not come into Eretz Yisrael. And then Hashem gives a reason for it. And he says, He says, Vatapchem, but your little ones, Asher Martem Lavaz Yia, that you said would be a prey. They visa osam, I will bring them in, but Yadu and they will know as Oretz, this land, Asher Ma'astem Ba, which you have rejected. And that's a key phrase, Asher Ma'astem Ba. So the, the initial question that we need to ask ourselves is, why such a severe punishment that everybody had to die in the desert, everybody that was over 20 years old? When you compare it with some of the other sins that B'nai Israel did, for example, the golden calf, where they actually were whooping an idol and God forgave them. Other things, uh, with uh, the, the uh, May Mariva, the bitter waters, and so where they argued, they, they complained about Hashem. Hashem forgave them on all these things. But only on this, they were not forgiven. They were given such a severe punishment. So the Timo Shalom is going to, going to talk about that. And the, the title of this Nativo Shalom, which I have on the screen, is Eretz Hemda. And you'll recognize that word because when we bench, you say the Berachat on the grace after meals, the second paragraph, we, it talks about Eretz Yisrael. Al Eretz Chemda Tova, on the sweet, good land that you've given us. So this is what the Nitivo Shalom is going to say. Let's read through the Nitivo Shalom, and these, these questions will be answered. And the lesson that we will learn from this is uh, how important it is to live in Eretz Yisrael. And I, I will say at the outset that I, I'm sorry if what the Nativo Shalom says that I'm going to be teaching and reading uh, will offend some people. Uh, I, I can't help that. The, the facts are the facts. The Torah is the Torah. And uh, hopefully, rather than being offended by anything the Tebow Shalom says, you will learn a lesson from it and take appropriate action as is indicated in this particular Torah reading. So let's, let's, let's read what he says. Inyan Kedusha's Eretz Yisrael, Matsina, with relate, relation to the, the holiness of the land of Israel, we find in Chazal, Mamorim Rabim Hamafalayim Rom Archal. We found many, many, many things that our sages have said, talking about the, the higher value uh, of the land of Israel, of Eretz Yisrael. The Mechita, it says, Isa She'ein Ashkina Nigleit Bechutz 
the, the Hilta says the presence of God, the Shechina, is not found in Chutz Loritz outside of Eretz Yisrael. Yemar, and they bring a proof from this from the prophet Jonah, from Yonah, where it says, Vayokam Yonah Livroach Tarshisha Yipnei Hashem. Yonah got up to, to run to, to, Shar, to Sharshish away from God. Shomer Yonah, Yonah said, Eilech Bechutzel Oretz, I will go to Chutzel Oretz. I'll go out of the land of Israel. Makum She'en HaShchina Shora, the place where the presence of God is not revealed and is not present. And there God won't be talking to me. You know, God is telling me to go to Nineveh and save all these people. And I don't want to do this. It's a, it's, it's a mystery. It's not going to succeed. I don't want to do it. I don't want God to talk to God anymore. So to, to get around that, he said, I'm going to go flee to Chutz Loretz. We can't Raya. And from here we have a proof. Shanim Tsaim Bachutz Loretz, that anybody who is living, who's found in any land other than Israel, Chutz Loretz means out of Eretz Yisrael, out of the land, Ein Aleyhem Hashras Shechina, does not have the presence of God with them. Kislemot Kedushas Yisrael, the perfection of the holiness of, of, the, of the country of Eretz Yisrael. Iraq kasher heim nimtzim Eretz Yisrael is only if the people are found, the Jews are found in Eretz Yisrael. Moshe Kosa B'Sefer Kuzari, the Kuzari writes, Shenitzotz or Elokav, Shora al El Yisrael, the the spark of of the light of God shines on Eretz Yisrael. Rak kasher heim nimtzim Eretz Yisrael. It shines on the Jewish people, Al Yisrael. The light of God shines on the Jewish people, but only if they are found in the land of Israel. He gives a, 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 a parable, a comparison. He says, if you plant a vineyard on a mountain, uh, it's going to grow uh, successfully. And I guess it's because the rainwater drips down so it doesn't flood it. So it has the right nourishment, but not too much nourishment. That's, that's a guess. I don't think about vineyards. Commercial, uh, uh, so Israel, similarly, the children of Israel, the Jewish people, Kashrahim Nim Tsoyberich Israel, Shora Leia Mitsuts or Eloka. When the children, when the Jewish people are found there in Israel, the the light of God, this light of this the flame of God is upon them. Vimitra Shokhatov says. Isa, Shivim Umos Barati. God says, I, I created 70 worlds. There are 70, not 70 worlds, 70 nations. There are seven, 70 archetypal, archetypal nations, uh, and all the other nations come from those, those nations. So I created 70, but out of those 70, what did I do? Uvacharti by Israel. I chose the Jewish nation. Shiva Yamim Barati Olami. I created seven days in the world. Uvacharti Bioma Shabbos. And I chose the Shabbos day, the day of Shabbos. Sheva Artsos Barasi. And I created seven continents. Uvacharti Eretz Yisrael. And I chose Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. Lisa Bechazal, and it, the sages tell us, Bechem Pesach Rambam, Malach and the Rambam says this as a halachic as a halachic statement. He says, Asur let says Beretz Yisrael lechutz laoretz laolam. It is forbidden to leave the land of Israel to go to chutz laoretz at any time, except for two exceptions. Ella Lilmod Torah, to learn Torah, Olisa Isha, to marry a wife. Magamba Ofen Shemutar Letseis, even though 
according to the Rambam, it's permissible to leave for those circumstances. Ein zen midas chasidus, this is not the pious way. Shachasidim nizharim shelo yit yatsat. The, the pious ones, the chasidim, those who are really close to God, are careful never to leave Eretz Yisrael. But the halan kasov, and further on it's written, la'olam yidor adam Eretz Yisrael. A person should always live in Eretz Yisrael, should always live in the land of Israel. Afilu ve'ir shuroba aku. Even in a city that is completely filled with non-Jews in Israel, living it's better to live in that city, city full of non-Jews in Israel, while yidor v'chutz l'oretz than to live anywhere other than Israel in chutz l'oretz. Bafilu be'ir shuroba Yisrael. Even in a even in a city where the majority of people are Jews. Shekal hayotze lechutz l'oretz. Everybody that goes to chutz l'oretz and leaves Eretz Yisrael, ki'ilu oved avodazora. It's like somebody is worshiping idols. These are not my words. These are the words of the Tivu Shalom, of the Midrashim, and of the Torah, and of the Poskim. Shinamar, it says, ki gershuni hayom mehamat amat. I have driven you out from the inheritance of the inheritance of God. Tell you, go serve other gods. The Ramban, the Ramban of our Indian, he explains Eretz Yisrael, that That the, Eretz, the land of Israel that, that God has chosen, Hainu, Shalo, Masara, Lashum, Sar, Umoshel, Umalach, because God did not appoint any minister, any angel, uh, any officer, any ruler, any king, Umalach, Lanhiga, to govern Eretz Israel. Only God Himself in His glory, Manhiga, uh, et. He only God is the runs Eretz Yisrael, but not also Nachla. Not also the Nachla. Imo Zera Ohavon. He gives an inheritance to his children that he loves. Vatoros Ovos, Vatoros Ovos, it says, Isim Morna Saba Kodesh Pislotim Zachacholenu, Ala Posik. We learned when Yaakov Avinu was traveling uh, and he was going to leave Eretz Yisrael and he had the dream. And the dream said, Vahine Sula Mutsav Artsa. There was a, a ladder coming up from the ground, standing up from the ground, Rosho and its head, Magia Hashemaima, reached the heavens. Hine Hashem Nitzav Alav, at the top of the ladder, God was standing. There are two different ways of receiving the reward that God gives to us. The reward every day, the Shefa, the, the goodness that God bespoke, Bestows on his people. One way, there's a natural way. You can receive these rewards naturally according to whatever the uh, preordained time is, preordained season is for you to get this, this, this reward. Not this, I use the word reward, it's, it's, not, it's really not a good term. To get this sustenance that God gives us, the blessings that God gives us. You can get it naturally. But Alan Huga Zu, on this way of getting it, that's the part of the ladder. It says that this, the ladder is standing on the ground. Meaning the ladder, remember where Jacob was, Yaakov was a Chutz Loretz. So the ladder was on the ground, Chutz Loretz. 
but the Midrash says the top of the ladder, which where it says God was standing, was right over Yerushalayim. Behindu Hashefa Bakarish Borhu Levado. I skipped the line, I'm sorry. Bod Yesh Hanhaga Al Tavit, the Vhinas Vinya Shem Nitzavailov. And there's another way of getting the, the sustenance that God gives us over and above nature. And that's the second part of, of this. Hashem is standing on top of the ladder over Yerushalayim. Behind Hashem of the Gresh Baruch Levado, only the direct reward, the direct sustenance from God, over and above anything that might have been preordained. God is full of kindness, Umali Rahmin, full of mercy. Every day he wants La Sos Chesed Rahmin to do kindness and mercy to his to his creations. Nasan Od Hanhagavyuchedes. He gives a, a, a unique, a unique thing, Shiva Odam Yahudi, Ms. Hazak Bamuna Yatera, if a Jew is serving God with extra an extra amount of, of amun and he's he's holding on to that amuna to that faith in God as I yom every single day God then will will drown him with with sustenance. The chutzlashaders nikov rosh hashanah. We know. And Rosh Hashanah has determined how much money you're going to make each year. That's according to nature. That's according to what's preordained. This is over and above that. This is in addition to whatever is decided Rosh Hashanah. On Hogazu, he rocked the Eretz Yisrael. And this is only in the land of Israel. Shalea Nemar, as the Torah says, Eretz Asher Shemelokecha Doresh Oto Tomi. This is the land that. God is always looking after. Any Hashem Elokecha, the eyes of God are on it, on the land of Israel. From the beginning of the year until the end of the year. Shuhi Lamala we call Seder, over and above any ordained order of what people should get. It's not the, the, the reward, the sustenance that you get from living in Eretz Yisrael isn't in the purview of any angels. The Pachashum Madarim, not under any uh, set order. Only directly from Hashem. You imagine we have a direct pipeline from Eretz Yisrael to Hashem. You know, when you're standing at the Kotel, you want to talk to Hashem. You're standing in Jerusalem, you want to talk to Hashem. Or you're standing in Afrat or anywhere else in Israel. It's a local call. It's not a long distance call. Those that are living, that are found in Eretz Yisrael all year long, it's like you have a Rosh Hashanah every single day. Because every day, additional sustenance is coming down to the Jew who has perfect, perfect faith in God. Those that are in the it's outside of Eretz Yisrael, they're able to, uh, to pray for, to, to continue the sustenance uh, through Eretz Yisrael. As it says, uh, I will pray for you in the way of your lands. But even though you're praying for it, you can pray for it in the Lord's. The higher sustenance, rock the Eretz Yisrael, is only from Eretz Yisrael, only in Eretz Yisrael. And we can see 
the greatness, the great holiness of the land of Israel. The Chazal Hamidu Zot Madrego Kogelo. Their sages, her sages have put this on such a high level. Yesh Lomer Alpi Mand Omer Be'etzachayim, as it says in the Etzachayim, Me'ariya Kodesh, the Holy Ari. The Keshem Shemadregos Domam Someach Chai Medaber. Just like there are different levels of inanimate, something that grows, something that, lo- that lives, something that speaks. Yesh Mamotsa being called Madrega, Madrega, Shalamala Menu. There is a, uh, a, a giver giving that, whatever it is, whether it's a, an inanimate object, vegetation, living, living being, a living thing like an animal, or somebody who speaks. Giving them their sustenance. Bein domam, bein domam le le tzoma le tzomea. From an inanimate object, something that's growing. Yesh mamotza. There's the needs. The needs are fulfilled. There's a there's a giver of what is needed. Bechem bein tzomea lechai. And similarly between the uh, that which grows and that which has the breath of life in it, like an animal. From an animal to a human being. Similarly, above this, there's a mimotza, a, a, a one who gives sustenance to those who are receiving it. And this is talking about the higher of the ten spheros. The highest one is Keser, crown, referring to the, the crown of the crown of God. That's the highest one. And that's the that's the mimosa. That's where the the sustenance comes from. There's three aspects, three different levels at which. God provides sustenance. And there, there are three different worlds. There's the world of Olam, which is like the, the world, Shana of, of time. Uh, Olam is space, Shana is time, and Nefesh is uh, the, the spirit. But Olam, and but Olam, Eretz Yisrael, he bechines hamamosa. Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael is like the provider of sustenance for the rest of the world. And from here we see the higher levels of holiness of Eretz Yisrael, that God chose from other the lands. As we said, I created seven continents of Eretz Yisrael, and I chose the land of Israel. Komar Chazal, and Chazal says, Gemur is Tanis, it's Hejah saying Gemur Tanis. Kol harotzos matzmat mitamtsis Eretz Yisrael hein choson. All of the lands of the world gain their sustenance. They're drinking out of whatever they, they derive from the fact that there are Jews in Eretz Yisrael. Can you imagine if people would understand that concept and recognize the importance of the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael, the importance to their own livelihood, the importance to their own sustenance, how things would change in this world. Uh, people would stop hating Eretz Yisrael and trying to run it down. It's what gives the world sustenance. I know Eretz Yisrael, he am a mozer, shah shepa, shal kol olam, nishpa metamtsit Eretz Yisrael. The Shefa, the sustenance of the entire world, comes from Eretz Yisrael. And the second of the world is Bishana, uh, time. Uh, Shabbos Kodesh, who Bechinas Mosa. Shabbos is like the, the, the giver of sustenance. Shiva Yamim Barasi. 
I created seven days of a charti beyond my Shabbos. And I chose Shabbos. Kedisha Bazar Kodesh, the Holy Zohar says, Kol berchon de la'ela v'tata yoma shivia tluyen. All of the blessings from above and from below are all dependent on the seventh day, on Shabbos. Ki a Shabbos higam kem bechines mimotza. Shabbos is also looked at as the, the provider for those who are trying to who need the Shefa. Through the Shabbos, Shabbos Kodesh, the, the sustenance falls to the world. And the spirit, the soul, we know that the soul is a part of God from above. The soul comes from beneath. The neshama comes to beneath the kisei akavod. The soul is put into a body while it's here on earth. The soul is forever, and it comes from it's it's a, it's it's it comes right from God. It also the neshama is like providing sustenance. To call a guf makabel es chiyoso b'haneshama because. The body cannot live without an neshama. The entire sustenance of the human body comes only from the neshama. And never we see when the neshama leaves, that's it, the body doesn't function anymore. Zemash Omar, Shemral Shabbos Kodesh, that's what we say in Shabbos. We say in the uh, Say that Shabbos is the, the the sweetest of days. I have called you. Uven Eretz Yisrael, Nikrat Eretz Chemda. Uven Eretz Yisrael, Nikrat Eretz Chemda. Eretz Yisrael is called sweet land. Command Omer, the Yomosub Eretz Chemda. As I, I read at the very beginning of this year, the pasuk in the Torah where, where God is saying that you are punished because you degraded this this sweet land. Mashmot Hemda, he bechines promotes the aspect of the sweetness is again like something that provides sustenance. Eretz Yisrael, he Eretz Hemda. Eretz Yisrael is a sweet land. Shemay menu from it yoredet hashva chal haretz. All the nations of the world, all the countries of the world are nourished from this. But Shabbos Kodesh, he chemed out Shlomim. Shlomimeni read the Hashepel Chal Yomim. Shabbos is the, the sweetness of days from which the sustenance falls for all the days of the week. As the, 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 the Shabbos has its power over the rest of the week. And that's where our, the energy of the rest of the week comes from. As, as, the, as the Zohar Kodesh says, the call berchon de la elav tatab yomer shvim tuliyah. Everything is dependent. All of the blessings above and below are dependent, dependent on Shabbos. Kmosh on a shama mashpiel lechal haguf. Just like the shama uh, is uh, takes care and, and provides sustenance to the entire body. Vazel shomer Yeshua v'kolev, and that's what Yeshua. Ben Nun and Kali Ben Yefuna, the two of the spies who didn't go along with the others. That's what they said. They said, Tova Ha'aretz Ma'od Ma'od. This land of Israel that we went out to spy on is not only good, it's very good. Ma'od Ma'od. Hainu Shia Neshama Shal Shiva Ha'artzos Shal Kal Habriya. Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel is the Neshama of all seven continents and of all creation. With this, we can understand the sin of the Maraglim of the spies. Because they received uh, a, a punishment greater than any other in the Torah. Mandomer, 
Hameka et ha'am hazeb ish echad. I will kill this this people like one person. Ba'flacher shemacha lehem akadosh baruch hu. Even after God forgave them, uh, after the angel hazav, Hayom Hashem shalachti kivarecha. Hashem said, "I forgive you according to what you ask, Moshe." Memar ulam b'chayani. It still says, "By my life, he called her nashim haroim as kavodo, as kavodi. All that, all these people that have seen my wonders, imiras eretz." These people have seen my wonders and have, have said such slander, such lush and horror about my land, will not see this land. They won't, their tshuva won't be acceptable. It's not like the sin of the golden calf, where their tshuva was accepted, their repentance was accepted. Come on to Omer Shom, as it says, by Yisablu, they were crying after, after Moshe came down and they realized what they had done, the people were crying. Parish Ramban, Ramban says, Shasu Tshuva, they were doing Tshuva. They were regretting what they had done. They're doing Tshuva, and the Tshuva helped them. God forgave them. Vilokan, but here, Bechet Maraglim, and this sin of the Maraglim, Gam came to see it also was written via Sablu that they were mourning. Hello, holy lamb, holy lamb, but it wasn't, it didn't help them. It didn't help them. Hachuva, uh, Hachuva did not help. Hachuva was not accepted. Achain, Havin Bazer, Sha Amaraglim, Kaporo, Kafro, but Kedusha, Serach Israel. The spies, the Maraglim, were denying the holiness of Eretz Yisrael. Aloha minu, and they didn't believe. Shehu, shehi hamamotze sh'al yado yoreid ha'shefa mehamatzila netza. They didn't real, they didn't believe that all the shefa comes to those who are trying to receive it only from Eretz Yisrael. Mimela nifsiku mehem ha'shvot shal Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, the sustenance of Eretz was taken from them. And they were all destined to die in the desert. They say, all those wicked people will not see the land of Israel. The Kivlin should kafru since they they were kofir, they were uh, deniers. The holiness of, of Eretz Yisrael, she called a chef Elyon Yorin Aide Eretz Yisrael that they denied that all of the the sustenance comes only by virtue of Eretz Yisrael. Al Kain Lo Hoyu Lo Hoyu Cholim Lakabel As Hashvash Le Yisrael. Therefore, since they denied the holiness of it, they were not able to receive the sustenance from Eretz Yisrael. Zeru Perush, and this is what it means. The Yumasub Eretz Chemdas, I read at the very beginning. They, uh, they, they said nasty things. They made, they made this sweet land look disgusting. They, they denied that this was the sweet land. Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, is not a land, a country like other countries. It is the soul. And that which gives sustenance to all creation. Only through strong belief in the holiness of Eretz Yisrael. Does the holiness of Eretz Yisrael continue? Achem lo hamina bekedushas al kain since they didn't believe in the holiness lo yochol lamshicham lamshicham they couldn't they couldn't go into it. Bechein hu gam b'shabbos koders similarly with Shabbos. Call Shabbos Yehudi mami yoter bekedushas 
Hashabbos. The more a, a Jew believes in the holiness of Shabbos, Asher Chemdas Yamim, which is the sweetness of days, Osu Koros, it's called that. Kain Hu Zocha Lahamshich, that person, is, that Jew is also worth, worthy to continue the Shabbos Kodesh to, to take from, from that Shabbos, from the holy Shabbos, Kal Birchan Vela Vesata, all of the blessings from above and from below. So that is, that is an Atibu Chalam. Uh, I think that's, that's powerful. It's a powerful message. And I know that there are lots of excuses that people make as to why they don't want to go to Eretz Yisrael. They don't want to do it yet. Why they don't want to move there. Whether the excuses are religious excuses, economic excuses, social excuses. You can see from this Torah, from these words of the Tivo Shalom, if you're going to truly believe that Eretz Yisrael is Eretz Chemda, Tova, this good, sweet land. And you have to ask yourself, is it enough to say at your Seder every year, Shana Habab Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. Thank you for listening on behalf of the Web Yeshiva. Not that. <laughs> this is the Web Yeshiva Shir, sorry. I normally have a Web Yeshiva Shir. This is not from the Web Yeshiva. And what I've said is not, uh, in any way reflected on any of the uh, opinions of the Web Yeshiva, the opinions stated here are those of the Tivo Chalm and mine, wherever I interject that nobody else's. Uh, I'm going to stop the uh, recording now, and if there's any questions, we'll take them in a moment.